At this year's annual Berkshire Hathaway meeting, 93-year-old billionaire Warren Buffett and his 99-year-old billionaire business partner Charles Munger talked about the sad state of the world and whether or not it's even possible to achieve happiness given how bad things are. Now, it is incredibly f***ing ironic that they're even having this conversation considering the fact that capitalist pigs like them have sucked up all of our country's wealth, leaving the rest of us with a little more than crumbs. But I'm a charitable guy, so uh, let's go ahead and hear them out. First, let's get to Warren Buffett. Per Yahoo News, during the 2023 Berkshire Hathaway Inc. annual meeting, Buffett expressed his desire to be born in the present day, considering it a superior world compared to any before. He acknowledged that modern communication may sometimes make it seem worse than it is. Nonetheless, he emphasized that despite its challenges, the world is a remarkable place. I mean... Yeah, it makes sense that the ninth richest person in the world with an estimated net worth of $121 billion would say, you know, it's really not that bad. Actually, it's pretty good. Easy for you to say from your fucking ivory tower. Now, whenever there's a conversation about Warren Buffett, I feel very irritated because you have a lot of people who go to bat for him and try to defend him as a good billionaire, somebody who's much more humble. In fact, he's good because he still lives in the same house that he purchased back in 1958 for $31,500. Wow, look at that. Isn't he relatable? Billionaires, they're just like us. Except let's not pretend like that's the only house that he owned. He also purchased the beach house in California for $150,000 back in 1971 that he later sold for $7.5 million. So I'm sorry, Owning multiple homes isn't something that the average American can relate to, considering that most Americans at this point in time, at least people in my generation, can't even afford one. And people today, furthermore, can't even fathom buying a home for $150,000, let alone $31,000. That is mind-blowing to me. But I'm getting off track here because I want to get back to their meeting because what his business partner, Charles Munger, says it is genuinely mind-blowing to me, right? If you think that Warren Buffett's nonchalant dismissal of all of the problems is a little bit infuriating, well, you haven't heard from Charles Munger yet. Because in response, Munger shared a slightly less optimistic view than Buffett. He stated, I think the best road ahead to human happiness is to expect less. I think it's going to get tougher. For Munger, old values such as honor, trust, hard work, and frugality are the cornerstones of a fulfilling life. He often mentions the significance of choosing the right spouse as life's most crucial decision and insists that financial prosperity necessitates living within one's means folks i am i am genuinely losing my fucking mind this is astonishing to hear him say i mean the audacity of this motherfucker expect less and also live frugally peasants says the 99 year old worth 2.7 billion dollars i mean at this point how are we even supposed to take this fucking system seriously anymore Billionaires out in the open are saying, you know, if you want to be happy, you should live more frugally. Don't tax me, but you should do a little bit of introspection and understand why you're miserable. Maybe you're expecting a little bit too much. I like I'm honestly almost fucking speechless. Like this bitch has the audacity. Like I swear to fucking God, <laughs> but to flip this fucking table over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm just I'm just going to stop. Because I'm just going to go ranting, and you don't want to hear that. It's going to get messy, and I'm going to get canceled for saying something that I shouldn't. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna stop and tell you about the article, because it's going to get more infuriating. Because if you continue reading it, the authors disingenuously blow even more smoke up their asses. So both partners firmly believe that taking the high road in capitalism yields greater rewards because there is less competition on that path. Over the years, they have emphasized that while the company can afford to lose a lot of money, it cannot afford to lose even a fraction of trust. Reputation is everything. Ah, okay, so uh, taking the high road in capitalism yields greater rewards. All right, well, explain why Warren Buffett didn't take the high road when exploited steelworkers were striking at a plan in West Virginia. 
Yeah, we all remember that, right? CNN reports Senator Bernie Sanders wrote a letter to the Berkshire Hathaway CEO requesting that he intervene in a United Steelworkers Union strike at the Special Metals plant in Huntington, West Virginia. They've been on strike for three months. Special Metals is a unit of precision cast parts, which is owned by Buffett's Berkshire. At a time when this company and Berkshire Hathaway are both doing very well, there is no reason why workers employed by you should be worrying about whether they will be able to feed their children or have health care standards road. There is no reason why the standard of living of these hardworking Americans should decline. I know that you and Berkshire Hathaway can do better than that. Buffett responded, saying, Our companies deal individually with their own labor and personnel decisions except for the selection of the CEO. I'm passing along your letter to the CEO of Precision Cast Parts, but making no recommendations to him as to any action. He is responsible for his business. Oh, golly gee, I sure wish there was something I could do as the literal owner of the company, but unfortunately my hands are tied, so uh, I can't do anything. But please continue to think of me as the good billionaire. Fuck off. Fuck off with that bullshit. There is no such thing as a good billionaire. Every billionaire is a policy failure. The existence of billionaires should insult you. But we've all been indoctrinated into this capitalist cult at young ages, so we're programmed to believe that we shouldn't actually hate billionaires because we too could become billionaires one day ourselves. Except that's just not going to happen. The dream is dead. Stop believing that you're going to be a billionaire. You're not going to be a billionaire. And that excess wealth that billionaires hoard could literally save people's lives. Take this asshole, for example. 45-year-old tech billionaire Brian Johnson, who's so obsessed with reversing aging, he swapped plasma with his son and says that he spends $2 million per year trying to slow down his biological clock. Now, New York Post adds, Johnson thinks his current biological age is 36. He has the skin of a 28-year-old and the lung capacity in fitness of an 18 year old he also predicts he'll live to 200 which could bring a new perspective to the phrase till death do us part now that last line was included because this is a fluff piece about this billionaire and his dating life but uh newsflash brian you're not gonna live to be 200 years old and guess what you look like you're 45. You look like your age. So I guess congratulations, you fucking failed. Meanwhile, that $2 million per year that you've been spending could have been used to house, feed, or educate dozens, if not hundreds of people. But I mean, it's cute that you think that it's given you the skin of a 28-year-old. I mean, this is what I mean, right? It's infuriating. At a time when people are dying on the streets in this country, you have billionaires flaunting their wealth and telling us to live more frugally and for us to expect less. I mean, the wealth that they have, it should not exist. It needs to be forcibly confiscated, redistributed, and capitalism needs to be abolished entirely. And if you disagree with that, congratulations, you've been brainwashed. Rethink your life and understand that capitalism is a virus and it is not just destroying our country and democracy, it is literally destroying the fucking planet. And if we don't kill capitalism, capitalism is going to kill us. So wake up and understand that capitalism is not your friend, it is your enemy, and it is an existential threat to you and all of us.